it's dark by the time I get in my beloved 1998 Ford Taurus, a.k.a. the Blue Bolt. There's a fresh Red Bull in the cup holder. The Stephen King book on tape is all queued up and ready, and the driver's seat is perfectly molded to my body. The oils from my hands have created a spot the size of a grapefruit just above the dash. I pet the old girl when I feel like she's working too hard. The Blue Bolt is my partner, a loyal steed, a dirty, scrappy escape ticket. I put the car in drive and pull away from the house in which I rent a cramped and tiny room, share a weird-smelling kitchen, and disinfect the toilet seat constantly with Lys Lysol wipes, because I don't know my 12 housemates all that well. <laughs> I love getting out of the city. I love leaving behind the politics and the liberal guilt and the judgmental professors. Tina lives 90 minutes outside San Francisco. I mash play on the stereo and enjoy the ride. We've been dating for nine months and around month five talked about moving in together after graduation. In six weeks, I will finish my bachelor's from San Francisco State University, class of 2008. I make my way up to her every Friday, ignoring whatever party is going on that weekend. I love Tina's house, in the middle of nowhere, down a dirt road, surrounded by trees, so out of the way that it feels hidden and warm and safe. But tonight, as the blue bolt pulls up her gravel driveway, I see her waiting in the doorway, and my stomach turns hard and thick and heavy. She gets in the passenger seat, tells me we're going to the movies. I'm 21. I'm 21 and stupid and don't know the first fucking thing about what I really want. Last week, I told her that I wasn't ready, that I still cared about her, but didn't want to move in together. All the way to the movies, Tina stares out on dark roads and yellow streetlights. Neither of us break the silence. At the theater, she's more decisive than she's been our entire relationship. What do you want to see, I ask. She says, B-movie, without meeting my eyes. Two for B-movie, I say into the little box office microphone. One, she corrects. Her face is hard and determined. I'll get my own. She pays for her own popcorn, too, and we don't hold hands. At her house, we have sex just to avoid talking. The next morning, I wake up early to take my substitute teacher's test, something I organized back when the move-in-together plan was still a plan. The test is laughably easy, full of basic English language arts questions about main idea and how to use a glossary. Nonetheless, I feel good about myself for the first time in 24 hours. I call Tina. Let me buy you lunch, I say. I'm good, she says. I stare at the clear spot on the blue bolt's dash and bite my lower lip. I know you're mad at me. Okay, she says. Her voice reveals no emotion. She may as well be taking a survey. I'm sorry, I know you're mad at me. I know that I should have realized these things sooner, but please just let me buy you lunch. I'll go wherever, I swear. I can pick you up, I can bring stuff home, whatever. There's a pause followed by a curt Taco Bell. The usual. <laughs> she hangs up. I fucking hate Taco Bell. <laughs> In the drive through I want to remind Tina that I was the one who paid for every meal, every movie, every bar tab, on top of the $60 in gas the Blue Bolt needed every week. But instead, we eat in silence on her bed. I guess we need to talk, I say. Her head snaps towards the wall and she drops her quesadilla. She sniffles and inhales air like she just came up from the deep end. When she turns back, tears roll softly from her eyes. I don't think there's anything left to talk about, she says. And there isn't. I throw away our fast food wrappers and we walk to the blue bolt, which is waiting, as always, to shepherd me away. Tina and I kiss for the last time. Her salty tears fall into my mouth, and I know I'm going to lose it. I know that this is it, my first girlfriend, my first real relationship, the girl I lost my virginity to. It's all over. 
She says the things she always says when I leave, except usually that's on Sunday evening, not midday Saturday. Text me so I know you got home safe. Okay, I say, words thick with emotion. I will. The blue bolt and I pull away, and I can see her hands fly up to cover her face. I pass the Chinese restaurant that we love when I start to think about who to call. I start at the beginning and call my friend Ryan, who introduced Tina and I. We broke up, I say to him before he even says hello. You and Tina? Shit. Yeah, just happened. Over Taco Bell. Dog, that's harsh. <laughs> I can practically hear his brain flip over into supportive best friend mode. But whatever, dude. I mean, she was trying to pressure you into doing something you just weren't ready for. That's fucked up, man. You were just honest with her, right? Isn't that what girls always say they want? For guys to be honest with them? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I turn the blue bolt south towards the city and hit the accelerator. So you did the right thing is what I'm saying here. Plus, now you've got your weekends back. We should hella party. I laugh at this and am 90% sure that hella party means get drunk and watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Which is something I am all for at this point. <laughs> Sounds good, dude. As I drive, I think about the summer, how Tina and I had gone to the county fair. I had never been to any fair before and was struck by how much I loved the unbridled kitsch and Americana of everything. I soaked it in, the fried foods, the Ferris wheel, the prizes. I won Tina a small blue stuffed animal at a darts game and felt like king of the fucking world. At night, Tina and I made out like 15 year olds and drove home feeling safe and happy. I call Ryan again, tell him that we're going out tonight. We're going out and we're gonna get drunk and do stupid shit and wake up hating ourselves because we're 21, goddammit, we live in San Francisco. Let's do this. By the time I hit the Golden Gate Bridge, I've suppressed enough emotion and I convince myself that I need to remember everything, not just the good times. Like how she would make me brush my teeth before I kissed her good morning because she hated my morning breath. Or how she had given up talking dirty and thought it was stupid that I liked it. Or how she never understood that I write and sometimes that requires spending hours just being by myself staring at a Word document. I was just to that point, that point in all fresh breakups where a guy embraces his most selfish tendencies. I thought about how tonight was gonna be epic, damn it, because I was single again and feeling guilty as hell. I could start healing. Less than 20 minutes from home, I'm stopped in the middle lane. Saturday traffic near Golden Gate Park is the worst. I see him in my rear view, a white SUV barreling down on me like a wall. I can't change lanes fast enough. I grab the steering wheel as tight as I can, grit my teeth and close my eyes. The SUV collides into the blue bolt. The hood and trunk fold like an uneven accordion, crushing me between him and the car in front of me. My skull smacks against the headrest. My knee jams into the hard plastic underneath the wheel. Fuck, I hear the SUV driver yell. Adrenaline coursing through me, I get out of the blue bolt and see the whole scene. My car, my wonderful, safe car, is completely totaled. Hey, we don't need to call the cops about this, right? The driver says. I mean, it was an accident, right? I get his insurance information. My head is spinning. Other drivers swerve around us, telling us to go fuck ourselves. The temperature seems so hot. I think I said, I'm fine, how are you? About 19 times. <laughs> Why is it suddenly so hot? The blue bolt ran enough to get me back to my apartment. In my room, I flop on my bed, text Ryan, cancel the plans. I just want to sleep. I just want to wake up and have everything go back to normal. I think about texting Tina, apologizing again and again, and promising that I'd do whatever I could to make it work. I'd move in with her, if only so I could hide under her covers, in her bed, in her house, in the middle of nowhere. But the car is gone. My escape ticket, gone. My phone beeps at me, a text from Tina. Did you get home okay? I stare about it, I stare at it. I think about telling her the truth. Maybe she should know. But I write back, yeah, fine. I pull the covers over my, over my head in my bed, in my cramped, tiny, smelly room, 
in a city that I'd fallen out of love with long ago and resign myself to the simple fact that it will be a while before I feel safe again. Thank you. Rory Kelly!